Okay, so two metals you really should have heard of by now are aluminium and titanium. Now, these metals are actually everywhere. You look around, the common things that you take for granted wouldn't actually be possible um, or wouldn't be as useful as they are today without these two metals. As an example, aluminium is the major metal which is found in drinks cans. So drinks cans. It's also found in saucepans. So different cooking materials. Wires. So high voltage wires which can carry high voltage currents through them. And also, you wouldn't probably be able to go on holiday if it wasn't for this guy either because around 60,000 kilos of aluminium is used in each Boeing 747 plane, which are the planes that you probably board when you go on your summer and winter holidays. So that is a lot of aluminium, and we do need to actually get it from somewhere. And the problem with this is that aluminium in the Earth is never found as pure aluminium. Aluminium is normally found in different forms such as its oxides found as an aluminium oxide and often that is also joined to other metals and so we need a way of extracting pure aluminium now because aluminium is reactive we cannot cannot extract using carbon so obviously you've seen before that you can displace metals from their ores using carbon However, we can't do that with aluminium. Reason being because aluminium is more reactive than carbon and so carbon will not persuade aluminium to leave as pure aluminium. And remember, if we can't displace using carbon, then the normal thing that we do is electrolysis. Now, this is problematic because electrolysis requires a high amount of energy um, and also we still need to prepare the aluminium oxide in order to um, allow us to carry out the electrolysis. So, we separate via electrolysis. Okay, but first we must remove impurities. So, removing these impurities is obviously going to cost us money because it's an industrial process. So, we remove impurities and we also are going to have to melt it. And melting aluminium is actually pretty difficult because it its melting point is very high. We therefore dissolve it in a compound known as cryolite. Now you don't need to remember that uh, for the AQA course, but cryolite will allow the aluminium to melt at a much lower temperature. It's still a high temperature, it's around 800 to 850 degrees, but it's not in the thousands which it would be if it was just pure alum aluminium oxide. And so we, we melt it and it's in, in cryolite but remember, you don't need to remember that one. Now, because this is still using a massively high temperature, we are going to require a lot of energy to carry this out. We need a lot of e electricity to carry out electrolysis because that is a high energy process. And we also use energy removing the impurities. And so overall, it's going to be a pretty expensive process. And on top of that, all that energy is probably coming from burning fossil fuels. And so it's also going to cost the environment. It's also going to be harmful to the environment. So obviously, it's still something that we do a lot of because we do need a lot of aluminium because we need to put it into planes. We need to put it into tin foil, drinks, cans, etc. But we need to realize that it is costing a lot of money and it is damaging the environment. And another thing to realize is that aluminium pure... So AL just stands for aluminium. Pure aluminium is not very useful. Not very useful. So all these uses of aluminium that I've been talking about, um, pure aluminium wouldn't really suffice. So what we do is we use aluminium alloys. And that means we create a mixture with a different metal in order to sort of tweak its characteristics. So if the pure aluminium is too soft, then we put something else in to make it harder. Or if we need it to be more bendy, then we put something else in there to allow it to do that. So we, um, we allow the characteristics to be changed by adding these different materials. Okay, and so next we have titanium. Now titanium is another metal which is very hard and strong for its mass. So aluminium and titanium, the reason they're both used so much is because their density is quite low. So their mass 
given a certain amount of the metal is going to be fairly low. And so that means that we can use it for various different things. Now, titanium is denser than aluminium. Aluminium is very, uh, very light. It's not very dense. Uh, titanium is denser, but on the flip side, it is a stronger metal. So it's a stronger metal uh, than aluminium is, and it has a higher melting point as well. It has a very high melting point. And so therefore, we use it for things which require such characteristics. For example, when aluminium isn't going to cut it because it's just not strong enough, Things like high-performance jets, so in the military, are going to use titanium more than they are aluminium. Um, also, high-quality racing bikes are going to use titanium because if you're traveling at a very high speed, uh, then you are going to need a metal which can withstand um, the elements and also be able to survive a crash. And so titanium would be your choice of material there. It's also used uh, a lot in chemistry. Because it's not a very reactive metal, it means that we can allow other things to react and produce a lot of heat. And titanium could be there just to protect everything else and it's not going to react and it's not going to melt because it has such a high melting temperature. Okay, so there are various other uses as well. For example, um, replacement hip joints and things like that. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is the most common use of titanium is we create something called titanium dioxide. And that is actually used um, in cosmetics and sunscreen because the titanium dioxide is able to absorb ultraviolet light. And so that protects us. So even though we think of it as being hard and used in a lot of heavy duty stuff, it's also used in things which are quite common like sunscreen. So it's a very useful metal indeed. And so how do we extract uh, titanium? Well... Titanium is not a reactive metal. Titanium is not reactive. So that's great. We can react. We can just uh, extract it using carbon, can't we? Well, no, we can't because unfortunately, if we try to extract it using carbon, using carbon, then the carbon actually reacts with it. So rather than reacting in a way which frees up the titanium, it reacts directly with the titanium. So, so the titanium reacts with the carbon. Okay, And that's a bad thing because it causes the titanium to become very brittle, which is of course not why we use it at all. But what we do is we use the same theory using a reactive metal rather than carbon. So we carry out a displacement. So displacement awful handwriting there, displacement, and it's using a reactive metal, and it's normally sodium or magnesium, okay, because they're very reactive, and that means that they can persuade titanium to leave its compounds and just become pure titanium. Problem with that is that because sodium and magnesium are so reactive, we have to produce them by electrolysis. So even though we're not using electrolysis to get our titanium, because we can't use carbon in order to carry out a displacement, we need to use electrolysis, electrolysis to obtain the sodium and the magnesium. And that has exactly the same issues as we had with the electrolysis of aluminium, in that it's very expensive and it uses a lot of energy. And because titanium is found in rocks, it normally has to be processed, so the rocks have to be processed, so the titanium ore has to be processed, and we separate the titanium oxide from the ore and turn it into a chloride. And so that obviously requires energy as well, it's an extra step, and so titanium is not a simple metal to produce either. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. This was just a brief overview of the two metals. There are loads more uh, uses of titanium and aluminium. You feel free to look them up. There are some uh, quite amazing ones, actually, especially recently. Aluminium is actually being used in heavily bulletproof windows in the military, so they can withstand... Uh, shots from a 50 cali caliber bullet, which obviously glass can't do. So very interesting. But I hope this has cleared up why and how we extract titanium and aluminium and why they are so useful. So if you do have any questions, then please do put them in the comment box below or send me an email. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.